June 29. Unfaithful Jerusalem. See how Jerusalem, once so faithful, has become a prostitute. Once the home of justice and righteousness, she is now filled with murderers. Once like pure silver, you have become like worthless slag. Once so pure, you are now like watered-down wine. Your leaders are rebels, the companions of thieves. All of them love bribes and demand payoffs, but they refuse to defend the cause of orphans or fight for the rights of widows. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, the mighty one of Israel, says, I will take revenge on my enemies and pay back my foes. I will raise my fist against you. I will melt you down and skim off your slag. I will remove all your impurities. Then I will give you good judges again and wise counselors like you used to have. Then Jerusalem will again be called the home of justice and the faithful city. Zion will be restored by justice. Those who repent will be revived by righteousness. But rebels and sinners will be completely destroyed, and those who desert the Lord will be consumed. You will be ashamed of your idol worship in groves of sacred oaks. You will blush because you worshipped in gardens dedicated to idols. You will be like a great tree with withered leaves, like a garden without water. The strongest among you will disappear like straw. Their evil deeds will be the spark that sets it on fire. They and their evil works will burn up together, and no one will be able to put out the fire. The Lord's Future Reign This is a vision that Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. It will be raised above the other hills, and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. There he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. A warning of judgment. For the Lord has rejected his people, the descendants of Jacob, because they have filled their land with practices from the east and with sorcerers, as the Philistines do. They have made alliances with pagans. Israel is full of silver and gold. There is no end to its treasures. Their land is full of war horses. There is no end to its chariots. Their land is full of idols. The people worship things they have made with their own hands. So now they will be humbled and all will be brought low. Do not forgive them. Crawl into caves in the rocks. Hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of His majesty. Human pride will be brought down and human arrogance will be humbled. Only the Lord will be exalted on that day of judgment. For the Lord of heaven's armies has a day of reckoning. He will punish the proud and mighty and bring down everything that is exalted. He will cut down the tall cedars of Lebanon and all the mighty oaks of Bashan. He will level all the high mountains and all the lofty hills. He will break down every high tower and every fortified wall. He will destroy all the great trading ships and every magnificent vessel. Human pride will be humbled and human arrogance will will be brought down. Only the Lord will be exalted on that day of judgment. Idols will completely disappear. When the Lord rises to shake the earth, his enemies will crawl into holes in the ground. They will hide in caves in the rocks from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. On that day of judgment, they will abandon the gold and silver idols they made for themselves to worship. They will leave their gods to the rodents and bats while they crawl away into caverns and hide among the jagged rocks and the cliffs. They will try to escape the terror of the Lord and the glory of His majesty as He rises to shake the earth. Don't put your trust in mere humans. They are as frail as breath. What good are they? Judgment Against Judah 
The Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, will take away from Jerusalem and Judah everything they depend on, every bit of bread and every drop of water, all their heroes and soldiers, judges and prophets, fortune tellers and elders, army officers and high officials, advisors, skilled craftsmen and astrologers. I will make boys their leaders and toddlers their rulers. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. Young people will insult their elders, and vulgar people will sneer at the honorable. In those days, a man will say to his brother, Since you have a coat, you be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. But he will reply, No, I can't help. I don't have any extra food or clothes. Don't put me in charge. For Jerusalem will stumble and Judah will fall because they speak out against the Lord and refuse to obey him. They provoke him to his face. The very look on their faces gives them away. They display their sin like the people of Sodom and don't even try to hide it. They are doomed. They have brought destruction upon themselves. Tell the godly that all will be well for them. They will enjoy the rich reward they have earned. But the wicked are doomed, for they will get exactly what they deserve. Childish leaders oppress my people, and women rule over them. O my people, your leaders mislead you. They send you down the wrong road. The Lord takes his place in court and presents his case against his people. The Lord comes forward to pronounce judgment on the elders and rulers of his people. You have ruined Israel, my vineyard. Your houses are filled with things stolen from the poor. How dare you crush my people, grinding the faces of the poor into the dust, demands the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. A Warning for Jerusalem's women. The Lord says, Beautiful Zion is haughty, craning her elegant neck, flirting with her eyes, walking with dainty steps, tinkling her ankle bracelets. So the Lord will send scabs on her head. The Lord will make beautiful Zion bald. On that day of judgment, the Lord will strip away everything that makes her beautiful. Ornaments, headbands, crescent necklaces, earrings, bracelets and veils, scarves, ankle bracelets, sashes, perfumes and charms, rings, jewels, party clothes, gowns, capes and purses, mirrors, fine linen garments, head ornaments and shawls. Instead of smelling of sweet perfume, she will stink. She will wear a rope for a sash and her elegant hair will fall out. She will wear rough burlap instead of rich robes. Shame will replace her beauty. The men of the city will be killed with the sword, and her warriors will die in battle. The gates of Zion will weep and mourn. The city will be like a ravaged woman huddled on the ground. In that day, so few men will be left that seven women will fight for each man, saying, Let us all marry you. We will provide our own food and clothing. Only let us take your name so we won't be mocked as old maids. A Promise of Restoration But in that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. The fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of all who survive in Israel. All who remain in Zion will be a holy people, those who survive the destruction of Jerusalem and are recorded among the living. The Lord will wash the filth from beautiful Zion and cleanse Jerusalem of its bloodstains with the hot breath of fiery judgment. Then the Lord will provide shade for Mount Zion and all who assemble there. He will provide a canopy of cloud during the day and smoke and flaming fire at night, covering the glorious land. It will be a shelter from daytime heat and a hiding place from storms and rain. A Song About the Lord's Vineyard Now I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a rich and fertile hill. He plowed the land, cleared its stones, and planted it with the best vines. In the middle, he built a watchtower and carved a wine press in the nearby rocks. Then he waited for a harvest of sweet grapes, but the grapes that grew were bitter. Now, you people of Jerusalem and Judah, you judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard that I have not already done? When I expected sweet grapes, why did my vineyard give me bitter grapes? 
Now let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will tear down its hedges and let it be destroyed. I will break down its walls and let the animals trample it. I will make it a wild place where the vines are not pruned and the ground is not hoed, a place overgrown with briars and thorns. I will command the clouds to drop no rain on it. The nation of Israel is the vineyard of the Lord of Heaven's armies. The people of Judah are his pleasant garden. He expected a crop of justice. But instead, he found oppression. He expected to find righteousness, but instead he heard cries of violence. Judah's Guilt and Judgment What sorrow for you who buy up house after house and field after field until everyone is evicted and you live alone in the land? But I have heard the Lord of Heaven's armies swear a solemn oath. Many houses will stand deserted. Even beautiful mansions will be empty. Ten acres of vineyard will not produce even six gallons of wine. Ten baskets of seed will yield only one basket of grain. What sorrow for those who get up early in the morning looking for a drink of alcohol and spend long evenings drinking wine to make themselves flaming drunk. They furnish wine and lovely music at their grand parties, lyre and harp, tambourine and flute, but they never think about the Lord or notice what He is doing. So my people will go into exile far away, because they do not know me. Those who are great and honored will starve, and the common people will die of thirst. The grave is licking its lips in anticipation, opening its mouth wide. The great and the lowly and all the drunken mob will be swallowed up. Humanity will be destroyed and people brought down. Even the arrogant will lower their eyes in humiliation. But the Lord of heaven's armies will be exalted by his justice. The holiness of God will be displayed by his righteousness. In that day, lambs will find good pastures, and fattened sheep and young goats will feed among the ruins. What sorrow for those who drag their sins behind them with ropes made of lies, who drag wickedness behind them like a cart. They even mock God and say, Hurry up and do something. We want to see what you can do. Let the Holy One of Israel carry out His plan, for we want to know what it is. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good, and good is evil, that dark is light, and light is dark, that bitter is sweet, and sweet is bitter. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. What sorrow for those who are heroes at drinking wine and boast about all the alcohol they can hold. They take bribes to let the wicked go free, and they punish the innocent. Therefore, just as fire licks up stubble and dry grass shrivels in the flame, so their roots will rot and their flowers wither. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of heaven's armies. They have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. That is why the Lord's anger burns against his people and why he has raised his fist to crush them. The mountains tremble. And the corpses of his people litter the streets like garbage. But even then the Lord's anger is not satisfied. His fist is still poised to strike. He will send a signal to distant nations far away and whistle to those at the ends of the earth. They will come racing toward Jerusalem. They will not get tired or stumble. They will not stop for rest or sleep. Not a belt will be loose, not a sandal strap broken. Their arrows will be sharp and their bows ready for battle. Sparks will fly from their horses' hooves and the wheels of their chariots will spin like a whirlwind. They will roar like lions, like the strongest of lions, growling. They will pounce on their victims and carry them off and no one will be there to rescue them. They will roar over their victims on that day of destruction like the roaring of the see. If someone looks across the land, only darkness and distress will be seen. Even the light will be darkened by clouds.